Welcome back to our Mindset and Motivation Monday here on the Cabral Concept each and every week, bringing you something that I hope to inspire you, to motivate you, but not just to get you energized, but to also take action. I am one who is a big believer in inspiration, someone that loves to start their day with a little something to inspire me, to energize me, to want to make more out of my life, but I also don't want to leave it at that. I want to make sure that whatever is uplifting me is also moving me forward. So what I want to share with you today is a a breakthrough, six steps in positive psychology to help you get yourself from wherever you are right now. Maybe you're already in a good spot. That's fantastic. Or maybe you're not in the best spot right now. Maybe you're dealing with some issues right now with family, with relationships, with your health, with your body, with your own spirituality. Well, let's get you from wherever you are right now, one step closer, maybe six steps closer to being that much healthier and happier. That's what it's all about. I really look forward to implementing these steps right along with you. Please always let me know in the comments uh, any questions you have or things that you might be doing that are inspiring you or in allowing you to move forward in your life. So these are actually coming from Tal Ben-Shahar. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that, but he is a American and Israeli writer in the field of positive psychology and leadership. And what he's done is he's put together six steps that have been shown to amplify your levels of happiness. So six steps to amplify your level of happiness. And when I was reading these over, I understood them. They make a lot of sense to me. I was talking about them from the emotional aspect when I speak about that, you know, as part of the whole rain barrel effect. But these are things that are a part of all of us. And sometimes we simply forget. We forget that we need to include these as a human being in our life. That when we start to get too far away from them, well, that's when the unhappiness starts to set in. And it doesn't happen overnight. It's like this gradual effect in our life that we lose our happiness from when we were maybe a young child. So I want to get more of that back in my life. And I want, of course, you to get more of that in yours as well. So let me give you these six steps. They're not in any particular order. I'm going to give you exactly what uh, Ben-Jahar says and shares with you in his uh, 2000, actually, this goes back now a few years, 2006 writings, uh, but it has held up true today. And then I'm, so I'm going to give you exactly what he says. And then what I'm going to do is share my perspective on that of how I've seen it play out in my own life and also in my practice working with uh, tens of thousands of people around the world. So the first one is this, give yourself permission to be human, accept your emotions, including fear, sadness, and anxiety, rejecting them leads to frustration. So This is a big one that I know that I've personally dealt with, meaning if something is making me upset or whatever it is, oftentimes I just try to push it down or push it to the side. I like to just barrel through it. And the problem is if you do that too often and you don't actually look at the issues that are affecting you and allow yourself to feel those feelings, it's going to bubble up. It really is. What's that bubbling up term? Well, it means that eventually it's going to come to the surface. And when it does, maybe it's not from months from now or years from now, it's going to be much more challenging to overcome at that point. So what I like to share with people is this. And what I do myself is I allow myself to feel those feelings. I do not deny them anymore. The anger or frustration or sadness or stress or overwhelm or irritability. I recognize them. I don't deny them. I realize that I'm human and they're going to affect me too, even if I've done decades worth of work on myself, right? So we are all humans. We are not perfect. I am far from perfect. So what I do is I feel those feelings and now the difference is this. When I'm having that type of a day, we all have those days. When I'm having that type of a day, I say say to myself, okay, this is today. I'm going to go to bed early. Tomorrow starts a new day. Now, the problem may not have gone away that next day. However, the way that I think about that problem often changes. I'm less tied to it with those emotions of anger, frustration, whatever was at the moment. That has been a game changer for me, and I would love for you to try the same. Allow yourself to feel it for that day, go to bed early, start the next day fresh. 
All right, number two is this, simplify your life. Focus on one thing at a time and reduce multitasking. All right, I've talked about this before. I always, my, my line is this, you can achieve as much as you would want in life. You can achieve as many things as you want in life as you want, right? So you, can, you can literally have it all, but not all at once. So let's focus on one big goal at a time. Yes, you can work on a lot of different projects, but you need to be laser focused on one big goal. So I've put off a lot of different projects now because I'm working on one thing in my practice. I've taken a little sabbatical from seeing private clients in my, my wellness-based practice. I Now I oversee hundreds of people a week inside of our practice with our health coaching team. I still read labs, I still do all of those things. However, myself personally, I am working on about a dozen different health results accelerators and master classes that I believe are going to be able to help tens of thousands, if not millions of people around the world. And I'm going to be able to help many more people that I would possibly be able to speak with. Because even, even if I was pushing the envelope like I used to do and seeing 2,000 people a year, 2,000 appointments a year, that's 40 people a week. Even if I was doing that, I could now reach far more people than that, help far more people than that in a month. So there's no doubt about it that I can help more people in a month than I could do in a year. That is the main reason I started this podcast, okay? I can see 2,000 people a year, and even in my practice, I could oversee 20,000 appointments a year, which is great because I had a big team, and I was able to oversee and answer questions for other practitioners. However, I said to myself, what if I was able to reach 20,000 people in a day? And I was able to then do that a few years later with the podcast. So what I tried to do is just one thing at a time, one goal at a time. And I'm going to get to relationships in a moment. My health. When my health was ailing, and if I ever get sick now, everything else stops. Like, again, I still have to take care of my kids. I still have to do basic work. But I really just focus on that one thing. What's the most important thing right now? Health. Okay. I need to get well. Everything else, like my health results accelerators, my this, my that, all of those things can wait. Let me really focus on my health just for, again, what's it going to take? A week or two to get well from whatever we're dealing with? Okay. Let me take that time. Let me get well. Those things are going to be waiting for me. So again, be careful with the multitasking. Focus on that one big goal at a time. All right, number three is this. Find meaning and pleasure. Engaging goals you want to achieve instead of what you feel obligated to do. Spend two hours per week on hobbies. Spend time with our loved ones. I love this. This is my, this is, I have a lot of favorites, but this is like one of my favorites, if not my favorite going into 2021. It really is. Here's why. I am such a big believer now in order to feel whole and happy, you need to have a half hour a day to yourself to do whatever it is that you like. Now, if you look at what um, Tal Ben Shahas, Ta Shahar says, two hours per week. Well, I agree. It's about a half hour a day, right? So how much? Yeah, it's my, mine's a little over the two hours a week. Um, you could get your two hours, I guess, all at once. But I like to say, can you get that half hour first thing to start your day? or at night, but like it, at night is too late in the day because you're dealing with the frustrations of the day. If you give yourself a little something first, you say, okay, that's what I do. I wake up an hour before my family to just have a slow morning routine, do a half hour of me things. And then I say this, the rest of the day is dedicated to my work, to the people in my practice, to my team, to my family, my two young daughters. That's what it is. But let me just get a little bit of me time so then I could say, the rest of the day is yours. I feel good. I got a little bit of me time. Now I'm happy to give, right? People forget that we need to fill up our own cup before we can give more to others. The more my cup is full, the more I can give to everyone else. If my cup is empty, it is difficult to pour from, right? If I have more happiness in my life, am I better able to take care of others and help lift them up? The answer is yes. If I'm healthier myself, can I help more people? Yes, because I have more energy. I have more vitality. I have more ambition to do more. I could not begin, I could not have created the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute to teach other health coaches how to become health coaches, right? I could not have created my health results accelerators if I was not healthy today. The most important thing I ever did was get myself healthy. 
I'm a better husband to my wife. I'm a better father to my children. I'm a better uh, leader on my teams, like all of those things, because I'm healthy, because I have the energy, the vitality, the love, the peace, the perspective, the gratitude now. If I didn't have that, if I was sick and I was upset and I was miserable, well, I'll tell you right now, everything else would suffer. My health, my body, my relationships, my spirituality. So important that we take care of ourselves, all right? And that includes our mind. Do things that you love. I took up archery um, during the pandemic uh, around April. I first tried it um, in Australia. I was at this beautiful ranch in uh, probably about two hours west of Sydney in the Blue Mountains. Absolutely phenomenal. It was like our family's like time of our life. We loved it. My girls still talk about it to this day. Uh, they did archery. I did archery. I signed us all up for it, even though it was kind of for me. I figured other people might like it as well. They loved it. And it's been really a family activity. My two daughters love it. Um, I love it. And it's something that I took up. And so for me, going out for 20 minutes and, and shooting my bow, just doing target uh, practice is a hobby. It's brought me a lot of enjoyment. Now, a lot of people might they say like, that's, that's, you know, I would crazy. I would never do that. <laughs> I totally get it. You need to choose what you feel is right for you. Do something that is more just purely for you, just something that you enjoy. Knitting, crocheting, singing, dancing, art, something that's purely for you, right? That's, that's what it's all about. All right, number four is this. Focus on the positive and be grateful. Each day, write down five things for which you're grateful. I love this. I've done this for many, many years. I go in and out of it. Whenever I feel I need it, I go right back to it. It's a gratitude journal, right? A gratitude journal is this. It's a page for every day of the week. And you start your day and end your day with giving three to five reasons or things that you're grateful for. Now, it's fine to repeat. It is fine to repeat. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful to be able to do the work that I love. I'm grateful like for all these different things you can go through. Try to find, though, by the end of the day, new things you're grateful for, right? Oh, I'm grateful I was introduced to so-and-so. I'm grateful I was introduced to this new topic. I'm grateful to, like, give reasons that you're grateful. Like, hey, today was a tough day, but here's the great thing that happened. I'm grateful to have found a new plant-based lunch uh, location right around the corner for me that does takeout. Like, whatever it might be, get, find things to be grateful for. Here's why. It's contagious. The more that you practice an attitude of gratitude, the more it will spill into all areas of your life. Your mind will then be triggered to find more things to be grateful for. I'm grateful that my spouse, you know, uh, did so and so. I'm grateful that I was able to have breakfast this morning with my children. I'm, you know, like you will find things to be grateful for. Why? Because you know that you need to keep track of three to five to write down in the morning and three to five to write down at night. So, and again, you can do this with a simple app on your phone. You can buy a gratitude journal. Any of those things work. Like they absolutely work, uh, but it's a great thing. Focus on gratitude, right? And I often, I have, I have two main perspectives through which I try to live my life. The first one is gratitude. I've told you that before. Because no matter how bad things are, they could be 10 times worse. They really could for most of us. Eve, I mean, I was, I was really sick, like as sick as you can really get, but it could have been worse. Like, honestly, it could have been worse. It could have. And the truth is this, I wouldn't be where I am today without that. So that's the perspective. So I have two things, gratitude and perspective. Perspective is this, no matter how bad the day seems, by the next day, the next week, or a year from now, it's probably not going to be that bad. And we're going to learn a lot from it. We're going to be most likely be better for it if we come through that other side. It's important, though, that we get to that other side. So gratitude and perspective are what I try to live by, and they, they help me uh, at even some of the most stressful periods of time. Number five is increase the effort you put into your relationships. Go on a date with your significant other or spend more time talking to your children. This is a huge one. Uh, I remember, so again, before my wife and I had children, 
we we had been dating for a very long time before we got married and even after we got married uh, it was still probably four or five years before we had kids so we both worked we both loved to work we both loved our jobs worked hard and um, we probably wouldn't even finish work until seven eight o'clock at night and that's when we have we would have dinner together but we would make it a point to stop work by eight o'clock now you might say, well, that's really long. I agree, but we were both, we were single. We're obviously a couple uh, living together. We'd stop work and okay, we'd have dinner together. And that would be a time to come back together, to be able to talk about our day, share things that went well, share things that didn't go well. Well, then we had kids, right? And as anyone who has kids knows, well, your kids are your biggest end priority. They need you to survive. Your spouse doesn't need you to survive. So sometimes you're not putting as much effort into that relationship, but you need to, right? So you need to do simple things. And I agree with um, Tal Ben Shahar, and I hope I'm pronouncing that name correctly, that you need to pay attention to your relationships, that it's important that if possible, you and your spouse get one night a week at least to be able to go out away from the family, from the kids, whatever it might be, to be able to reconnect. And of course, it's much more challenging during the pandemic when everything's closed, right? So what can you do? Well, when your kids go to bed, you can still have a night together. You can still plan a dinner together. Yes, it might be a little later dinner that night, or it might be whatever. So you want to just be able to spend that time together. It's very important in that it's planned. And then in terms of talking with your children, I couldn't agree more. And that's why, again, I waited a little later in life to have kids. I was in my early 30s. And I said, I wanted to because I wanted to do a couple things. I wanted to be ready to have children. I wanted to be able to be more present with my children. And I'm glad that I did because one of my big things, as I said, I want to be home every night for dinner. Well, it uh, wasn't until about 2017 or so, I was still gone late one night per week. And that was a night that I saw people very late in my practice. And I was also working with a lot of people from Australia and um, virtually, and the time difference just had me staying a little bit later. And then uh, by 2017, 2018, I was home every night for dinner. Now, of course, yes, I was still traveling uh, until the pandemic hit once or twice a month, and I'd be away for two to three days at a time. So there's no doubt about it. I mean, I'm not perfect, and I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I just, and I always want to show you that I'm not. But when I'm with my children, nights, uh, for sure, I am present. My cell phone is away from us, and until they go to bed, I don't even look at that cell phone again. So I get home. I'm having dinner, we're doing books, we're doing games, we're all sorts of fun things, and also on the weekends. Like the weekend, I am like, I'm up before everybody, I get ready, and I'm ready to go. And like, we're doing, we're playing uh, games, we're playing Uno together, <laughs> we're, we're doing all sorts of things. I'm going outside with my daughters, even if it's freezing cold, and whether in Boston or in Maine, and, and we're just present. And I just think that one of the reasons why this means so much to me is that I just know that it's a finite period of time. And I know I've said this before, but it's so important to reiterate, your kids are young for a finite period of time. I'm going to work for the next 35 years, maybe 40 years, who knows, right? Could be longer with all the anti-aging things, but here's the deal. I have plenty of time to do all of those work-based aspirations. Um, I have plenty of times for other things in my life, but I want to make sure that I am present for my two daughters, especially during their younger years, right? So they're six and eight years old right now, and um, I'm committed to that. Now, they probably don't want to see me 24-7. My wife probably doesn't want me home 24-7, that's for sure, uh, because I'm how I am right now on the podcast. I'm like that all the time, and it can be a lot, right? So what I want to do is I want to make sure, though, that I'm fully present and that, that I'm there teaching them, that I'm listening to them, that I'm just enjoying with them as well. All right. Number six is this, the last one. Be mindful of the mind-body connection through exercise and the practice of mindfulness meditation, yoga, and breathing techniques. Research has shown that exercising leads to decreased levels of depression. All right, this one plays a big role in my practice. Um, the, every Thursday, I do a conversations with Cabral. You've heard me talk with Dr. Jay Wiles, Patrick McEwen, uh, with James Nestor, and I'm going to be having Dr. Andy Gelpin on in the future. We talk about exercise and we talk about breathing techniques pretty in depth. Why? Because they regulate physiology. 
And if you regulate physiology, you regulate what else? Your nervous system. Your nervous system does what? It regulates fight or flight or rest and relax. Exercise and breathing regulate rest and relax or fight or flight. And if you're in fight or flight, it leads to what? Poor sleep, which leads to what? Poor energy and brain fog. If you're in fight or flight, it leads to what? Higher levels of cortisol, which leads to high levels of anxiety and overwhelm and um, irritability. And if you have chronically high levels of cortisol and then they start to fall over time, it leads to what? Depression. We have to understand that yes, we, there are many reasons for depression and anxiety and all these things, but exercise and mindfulness and breathing and meditation and yoga oftentimes beat any pharmaceuticals in studies all across the world. I cannot recommend enough to you a, even just 20 minutes of exercise a day. If you have to choose between meditation, uh, yoga, or exercise, choose exercise. Honestly, I, and I'm a huge meditation and yoga person. Choose exercise though first, because exercise is going to uplift you. It's going to give you more energy in the long term. Do exercise. 20 minutes of really anything you want. Dance around your room, do Zumba, do all sorts of wild exercise, whatever you want. Don't get injured, but do whatever you want. Then eventually start to get into a more form, formal exercise program. Cardiovascular work, a couple days a week. Strength training can just be body weight exercises a couple days a week. Do it for 20 minutes straight. Just, just exercise. Pick your favorite workout program. I had Sal Stefano on a couple months back. Check out his programs. Check out my book, A Man's Guide for Muscle and Strength. It's for women too. Check out any program in the world that you want. Get your body moving. It's going to do so much for your mind and body. So hopefully today's show was helpful. I mean, I'm telling you right now, although these six steps you've probably heard about in some fashion before, we don't always live them. Go back, begin to implement them, live them in your life. You will be a healthier and happy individual. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's show. And as always, if the show was helpful, please do feel free to share it with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care, everyone.